Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. The title of my message today is The Bible Has Issues. The Bible Has Issues. How are you um, doing? How are you all doing tonight? Um, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? All right. The Bible has issues. Pastor Fola said the Bible cannot have issues. <laughs> I like it when Nigerian Christians like to discuss things that are bigger than them. Someone said it was written by man, so it's full of issues. <laughs> the Bible has many issues. And I want to talk about some of the issues today because there is danger in accepting the teachings of teachers who are manipulative. Come here, you, baby freeze, baby freeze. Someone says, I agree with him. The Bible cannot have issues. <laughs> as in, as in, how do you guys say these things? The Bible cannot have issues because you revised it, because you went through all the translations, because you can how why okay those of you that say the bible does not have issues explain to me why those of you that say the bible does not have issues explain to me why the bible does not have issues because i'm here to tell you today why the bible has issues pastor fola you said the bible does not have issues Oh yeah, tell me why the Bible does not have issues. Tell me why the Bible does not have issues. Star the writer says, it's clear you lack the Holy Spirit. You see, once you want to affirm your stupidity, you start creating a spirituality out of your foolishness. What nonsense, Holy Spirit. Before I even start, before I even start digging out for you, please, I need somebody who can read. I need somebody who can read. Aren't reading what we are typing? Please, please, please. Who can read Bible for me? Just one. I'm just going to point you one issue. One issue, and then I'm going to start telling you why we need to be careful and why this book is used for so much manipulation. Someone says only you and a few other people's people thinks you can't even write English. I need someone who can read Bible. You must have a good voice and a nice background, and there is no noise where you are. I'm not going to waste much time. Presh Nelson, I hope you are you can read well and you have New Living Translation. Someone says, point it out. You see, that's the thing. You are always looking for somebody that will do the job for you. I can't point it out in a week. This one is saying, don't insult, just talk, Jerry. That's how you talk to your father at home. Let me remove you from my life. You don't have any manners, please. So let's work. Let's work. Let's work. Ah, Iberia is around. I don't know if she's busy. I used her yesterday. Good evening. Good evening. What part of the world are you in? What is it? Ah, your network is not good. It's not clear. No, I heard it very clearly. And you heard me very clearly, but you're, you're, you have a noisy background. Oh, okay. Maybe it's the generator. Ah, I can't. No, Sadly. I, yeah, I, I can see it. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm just going to use you to read two scriptures for me. All right. 
All right. Uh. Sorry, so I'm trying to get it. Hmm. All right. So let me show you that the Bible has issues just to prove and then and then we um, we just move from there. Just a little thing I want to point out to you. All right, let us pray first. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather today. I ask for direction. I ask for healing and revelation, wisdom and understanding in Yahushua's name. Amen. So real quick, let us start with Matthew chapter 27, verse 5 and 7. That's all the Bible I need you to. Two verses. Matthew 25, verse what? 5 to 7. All right. So can I start? Yes. All right. Matthew um, 25, verse 5 to 7. But why the bridegroom was delayed? They all slumbered and slept. No, Matthew 27, verse 5. Okay, 27 verse 5, all right. Verse 5 to 7. Verse 5, and it says, Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and went and hanged himself. Verse 6, But the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, because they are pride of blood. Verse 7, And they consulted together and bought with them the potter's silver very strangers in good now let's read acts chapter 1 verse 16 to 18 this there is telling the same story acts chapter 1 verse 16 to 18 acts? chapter 1 16 to 18 okay acts chapter 1 verse 16 to 18 yes men and brethren this scripture are has to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Verse 17. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Verse 18. Now, now, this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling headlong. He burst open in the middle and all his angels gushed out. Okay, um, usually we use NLT. Do you have NLT? No, 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 sir. Hey, you foretell me, oh, it's NLT that we use. Because it's I'm more sorry. explicit. You tried, you tried. Anyway, do you understand what you just read? Okay. Uh, actually, at the in Matthew 27, verse 5, actually, what I learned is um everything here in, in one in one story in one line is this it is what this it this it um no you see um let me explain it to you anyway thank you so much for reading for me thank you so much my brother Presh God bless you all right guys um let me read this to you using NLT. The first one speaks of one account of Judas. It says, Matthew 27, verse 6, the chief priest took the silver and said, it is not lawful to put them in the temple treasury since it is the price of blood. So they came together and used the money to buy the potter's field, a burial place for strangers. But then if you read Acts chapter 1, verse 16 to 18, it says, verse 18 says, Now the man acquired a field. Judas went out to buy a field with the price of his wickedness. And falling headlong, 
he burst open in the middle and his intestines came out. You see, when you read King James, you don't understand what entrails are. So you are disconnected from the book. Matthew 7 says the chief priests bought the land and it says Judas hung himself. Acts chapter 1 verse 18 says Judas bought the land and he fell headlong in the land and his intestines came out. Does it sound to you like it's the same thing? I'm asking you guys, does it sound to you like it's the same thing? Let me turn off the comments so we can have a, a class that is complete. Dennis Samson on Twitter says, Oti Yawiri, Mundete Rapture. I'm asking you, what is it? Read it yourself. In fact, you know what? I can sit this out while you guys read it. So I'm waiting. I want you guys to read it. Matthew chapter 7, chapter 27, verses 5 to 7, and Acts chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. Please read it yourselves. Read it yourselves and tell me, I'm willing to bring anybody live just to tell me if it's the same thing in both chapters. Tell me. Is it the same thing in both chapters? Who is willing to come live and answer? Somebody that is critical. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to work with me. Let me try Vidoma. Oh, yeah. Pastor Fola, come and answer. Does it sound to you like the same thing? Pastor Fola, we are waiting on. I also sent requests to Mazi Obinaya, Captain 1313. I've sent Pastor Fola a request. Ebere, if you can come. Vidoma, the more the merrier. Hey, Captain 1313 came and left. Okay, my dear brother, Mazi Obinaya. Can we see you? The title of the topic is The Bible Has Issues. I'm going to make this a 10-minute teaching. Why is everybody coming and going? Okay, Vido Ma is here. Okay, at last, I have somebody. Sorry, I know it's not easy during the daytime. Vido Ma, how are you doing? Are you okay? Fine, sir. I'm fine. Okay. So the topic is the Bible has issues. Now I'm asking you, I'm asking you, um, I'm trying something on TikTok, by the way. They say gift target. Please help me make TikTok small by small. A person teach me today, say, do a gift target. So that's my gift target up there. 
help me make it happen if you're watching on TikTok. In the meantime, what is your answer, Vidoma? I didn't get the question. I just came in. There are two Bible verses I want to read to you. They are both speaking of the same account. The first one is Matthew 25, 5 to 7. I'm reading from the New Living, 20, Living Translation. Matthew 27, 5 to 7. In short, Matthew 27, verse 5. Are you listening? Then Judas threw the silver coins in the temple and went out and hanged himself. Verse 6. The leading priest picked up the coins. It wouldn't be right for us to put the money in the temple treasury, they said, since it was the payment for murder. Verse 7. After some discussions, they finally decided to buy the potter's field and they made it into a cemetery for foreigners. So that is Matthew 27, verse 7. Did you hear that? Vidoma, did you hear that? Okay. So the next one I want to read is Acts chapter 1, 16 to 18. Acts chapter 1, 16 to 18. Let me just read 18. 18 covers everything. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called the field in the language Akedema. That is the field of blood. So, did you hear both Bible verses? You read Matthew 27 verse 5, right? Did you heard what was inside Matthew 27 verse 5? Yes, sir. What can you explain by what you heard in Matthew 27 verse 5? Okay, that's what you understand by it. Yeah, that's what I understood. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Vidoma. Let me not disturb because I know you're busy. Okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, we have a gentleman here called Sam. Hello, Sam. How are you doing this evening? Good evening, sir. I'm fine. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, did you hear the scriptures I read, or do you want to read them yourself? It was it was a very powerful scripture, sir. Okay. You know, yeah. Um, I was I was actually wanting to talk about the Bible has issue. You're very right. I I believe so, and um, I just think that you know. There's a lot of politics when the Bible was written. Mm. I mean, if I say God, God spoke to me. There's a possibility that 
I can actually make that message to to suit my personality at that period. You know, maybe I'm not married, and God is talking about people who are the children of Israel. They are going into slavery, and I'm not going to marry them. So because I'm not married now, there's possibility for me to now begin to think that, you know, even though this is this is an inspiration, that particular prophet is proceeding from God at that time, there's possibility that there could be a shift due to human nature, you know, and come to think of this this uh, man Judas as well, I think that him too is kind of mindset, you know. Is 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 this is what anybody who can do, mostly um, when there are a lot of um, maybe there is no support, parental support or governmental support, you know, anybody can betray um, anyone. Mm. Mm. So yes, yeah, so but people tend to see him as the very bad person, mm. whereas a lot of people. Do this on a daily basis. It looks okay, bro. I just wanted to pick I just wanted to pick up from you one or two things. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to make this as open as possible. Take care, Stephen. Do have yourself a lovely day. So you see, if you look at Pastor Fala says, Can you let me in without light? Um, there's really nothing to to let in i want to move on with the topic because i don't want to be here all day um if you read read it by yourself you don't need to trust me or believe me if you read matthew chapter 27 the account of judas throwing the money on the floor and then going to hang himself is different from the account in acts chapter 1 verse 18 where it was said that judas went to buy a land and by himself he fell on the land because if you read matthew chapter 27 after he dropped the money on the floor or he gave it to he dropped it on the floor uh, they were they deliberated about what to do with the money so judas did not even know what they did with the money he just went and hung himself but if you read acts chapter one it says he went to buy the land and on the land he fell head first and his intestines spilled open that doesn't sound like someone who hung himself. When you hung yourself, you don't fall head first. So, so, so what am I trying to tell you? See, these are some of the minor issues you see. These are some of the minor issues you see in today's world. There are many issues. One says the elders or the, the, the um, elders were the ones that bought the land. The other one said it was uh, Judas that bought the land. You see, you need to understand something, yeah? Especially with the issues regarding the politics of the manuscripts. Let me bring Fola on, even without light. Let me bring him on for a second. Just for five minutes. I want to ask him. Oh, wow. I didn't want to remove Falau. I said I wanted to add him. Go live with Falau. Yeah. So I want to ask him a few questions. Okay. Pastor Falau has joined us. Uti Mark. Okay. So Pastor Falau. Please explain the disparity between Matthew 27 and Acts chapter 1 talking about the same topic. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Good evening, Pastor Fola. How are you today? It's good to hear from you, sir. How is your family? How is everybody around you, sir? We're fine, thank you. Yeah, I hope all is well. Very well, sir. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah and uh, from, the, from the first instance, sir, I wouldn't like you to compare St. Uh, Matthew's Gospel with Acts of Apostles. 
they are different entirely, sir. You could see. Ah, okay, I agree. We can see they are different. But which one is now right? Which one is right? Inside, you just pay attention to what I have to say because I have limited time as, at the same time as well, sir. Okay. Uh, St. Matthew Gospel is extremely different. The account of the Gospel is different from the account of the heart of the Apostle. You understand, sir? And uh, without uh, taking much of your time, sir, you should note that uh, the act of Apostle is the continuation of actions that happens after Jesus Christ has descended and ascended. Uh, my question sir my question sir let let's let's keep let's okay, keep this I'm in a slow in a small bubble no that's to, what I, mean, I wanted to I ask want you to it's a simple a question I want, I want to lay a foundation sir before i could develop my points okay that's what i'm trying to say sir are you getting what I'm trying to say, sir? All right. I am getting you. I, but you have 30 seconds to develop your point because we don't have all day. Okay. Okay. If you could check from the account of St. Matthew Gospel, it is not only St. Matthew Gospel that showcase that reference out of all the Gospel. We have four Gospel, as you can see. And Gospel is like you and I saying the same thing. At the same time, if you and I should see the same thing at the same time, if they ask you the way you are going to present it, it's going okay, to Okay, let me ask you a question. Different. Sorry, I'm sorry, coming, sorry. I'm coming, sir. I'm coming, sir. I'm coming, sir. The way you're going to explain, the way you and I see the same thing at the same time, is going to differ from the way I am going to explain it. And at the same time, if there are other people there, there are different ways in which they are going to explain it. And that is exactly what happened, sir. So get it right. Get it right. The way St. Matthew goes... Okay, time up, time up, time up, time up, time up, time up. Okay. So, let me ask you a question. Is the Bible the word of God? Hey, Pastor Fola, don't go. I need you today. You cannot go... Pastor Fola, can you read me? Yes. Okay. Is the Bible the word of God? Is the Bible the word of God? Yes. Is it the word of God? Yes. No, just answer. It's a simple question. Yes or no? Is it the word of God? Is the Bible the word of God? The Bible is the infallible word of God. The infallible word of God. But you now said Matthew saw it from one side and Acts of the Apostles saw it from another side. So which of them is right? Because they are contradicting themselves. Hello, sir. I can hear you clearly. Listen, listen. Don't hear what I'm saying, sir. Sir, try to no. Hello, sir. Don't say and listen. What I'm trying to say is that try and listen to what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is that if you and I and some other people are in the same kind of environment now, we are seeing a kind of picture at the end. Is going to be different from the way I am going to present it. The way the third person is going to present it is going to be different from the way both of us are. Then it cannot be the word of God. You are just describing the word of two different people. Oh, wow, Pastor Fola, your network is not good. I'll bring you back some other time. You just said the Bible is the infallible word of God. Okay, I agree with you. The Bible is the infallible word of God. So God said something because if it is the word of God, then God said what was in Acts chapter 27. And the same God said what was in, um, sorry, Acts chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 27. So why are they different? You see, if it were the infallible word of God like you claim, Everything will tally. 
you just clearly showcased to us today that it is the word of different men who saw life from because God is all seeing, all knowing. No matter what angle God is looking from, He sees and knows everything. But you are telling me that Matthew saw it from this angle, the people that wrote Acts saw it from this other angle. You are buttressing the point instead of coming to tackle me and show me that I am wrong, the Bible does not have issues. You are actually buttressing the point that the Bible has issues. You are just saying that this person saw it like this and this person saw it like this. So my question to you is, who do we believe? Do we believe Acts? Or do we believe Matthew? Someone says, bring me up. I'm going to bring... I, I, I might end up not... You see, that's why sometimes I teach the same subject twice. Because people want to talk. Okay, come and talk. I'll give you one or two minutes. Let me hear you. Please, brother, on your light, on your light, on your light, sir. Please, I cannot do. I. There's no Nepal. All right, you have one minute. Let me hear you. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say um, there's a big question you ask. Is the Bible the word of God? I would like to say that um, most parts of the New Testament were accounts of um, disciples and apostles written based on the information they gathered during their stay with Christ and what they understood after he had left. Okay. Now, looking at the book of Matthew, Matthew is um, one of the most educated disciples Jesus Christ recruited himself. And one of the key reasons for Christ recruiting him is because of his ability to take things down. Now, the part where you read about in the book of Matthew, um, and before I say that, I want you to remember that as at the time when all this were happening, the disciples were also preparing for their whole last supper and all that. Why Judas not to go and do his stuff? So Matthew is uh, the one who is likely to give more accounts. But the Acts of the Apostle you talked about was written by Luke to Theophilus. It was even a letter. It was not like a gospel. It was like it's like those books that Paul used to write to the Ephesians, the Colossians. So Acts of Apostles was written by Luke to Theophilus. While Matthew was giving account of everything that he saw, heard, and believed. But the okay, I put it to you today that neither Luke nor Matthew wrote any of those Gospels. You are saying neither... neither Luke nor Matthew wrote any of those Gospels. The Gospels were written many years after them. But let's not even go into that, that intricacy. Let me ask you a simple question. Let's keep it simple. Let's not complicate it. Okay. Which one do we believe? Acts or, or Matthew? Okay. I, let, me, let me answer that, yeah? So this is how it works. There are two points to take away from both stories. Mm -mm, mm -mm, the one is correct, one is wrong. Because they have two different accounts. One said, listen, Matthew said, Judas went to the temple, dropped the money on the floor, and went out to hang himself. S straightforward, no complications. Act said, Judas went to buy the land. Okay. And he fell head first on the land and his intestines came out. So there are okay. two contradictory stories we cannot sugarcoat this we cannot spiritualize this we have to realize that something is not adding up so my question to you sir is which one is the correct one okay the thing is neither you nor i were present so even if we get a taught bible passage we will still doubt it but what i'm trying to say is the message here is this the money was used to get a land and Judas was buried in that land. Wow. Yes. That is one message we can confirm in both passages. Okay. So, 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 
we can confirm this from both passages but the passages are saying what the other one is not saying so so because we have to make this the word of god we are now going to just look for something that the two of them agree on meaning a land was bought we don't care who bought the land but guess what don't you hear your pastors coming out to tell us that judas hung himself i've heard pastors preach that judas hung himself the book of Acts does not um, totally eliminate. Yeah, well, it kind of does. It kind of does eliminate the fact that Judas hung himself. <laughs> okay, now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Between the textus receptus and the majority text, which will you take as more accurate? Come again with your last question, sir. Between the textus receptus. And the majority text, which would you find more accurate? First of all, I'd like to humbly ask, what is the textus receptus and the majority text? Okay, okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you, my dear brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate your honesty, Biggie Smalls. And I appreciate Thank the you. fact that as much as possible, you try to make sense of it to the best of your ability. And that I applaud. I, I, of everybody that came on tonight, I like this particular guy. He was being honest. He understood it. He tried to make sense of it, even though it's hard to make sense of it, but he tried. So let's talk about the textus receptus and the majority text. You see, when I said the Bible has issues, I'm not talking about your KJV. I'm not even talking about your NLT. I am talking about the foundation. Pastor Fola wanted to start talking about foundation. And then he was talking about, you see, the foundation lies very deep. Let us talk about the textus receptors. There are approximately 300,000 text, textual variants among the New Testament manuscripts, not Bibles. Three hundred thousand now the difference between the majority text and the textus receptus is in almost two thousand places what is the textus receptus a lot of you would ask it's the translation base for the original german luther bible the German Luther Bible laid the foundation for the William Tyndale, the Joy John Wycliffe, the Geneva Bible, and then later on the King James Bible. Textus Receptus was first published by Erasmus in 1516, and it was a Greek New Testament. It was further refined in 1550 by Robert Estienne and further refined in 1598 by Theodore Beza. Again edited by FHA in 1881. Now the majority text is a method of determining the original reading of a scripture by discovering what reading occurs in a majority of the manuscripts. That's why it's called the majority text. So the majority text is, for instance, we have, we have 10,000 texts. Inside these 10,000 texts, everybody says that Daddy Freeze held a white bottle. So, majority agree that Daddy Freeze held a white bottle. So, if minority say Daddy Freeze held a bottle, it is more likely for the scholars to translate it as a white bottle because most people agree that it was a white bottle. Now, since we have so many manuscripts, let us talk about some key issues in the manuscripts themselves. 
Let's talk about the age of the manuscript. You and I need to know. Foundation, Pastor Fola, I hope you're listening. There is no original of any manuscript of any Bible story, any Bible chapter. There is no Genesis. There is no Leviticus. There is no Revelation. There is no Acts of the Apostles. No original. What we have are copies of copies and the more times a manuscript is copied the more likely it is that errors will occur a first generation copy that was copied directly from the original is very likely to be closer to the original than a 20th generation copy a copy that was copied from a copy that was copied from another copy that was copied from the original so we don't have any originals. What we have are copies of copies. The foundation of Christianity, especially based on the Lutheran Bible, and consequently the Tyndale, the Wycliffe, the Geneva uh, Bible, the Bishop's Bible, was the Textus Receptus. And now we know after having more manuscripts to deal with, after we now know what the majority texts are, after having access to the Dead Sea Scrolls, we now see quite a few flaws in the Textus Receptus. Another issue you need to understand with the manuscripts is the location of the manuscript. I would trust an Egyptian manuscript a bit more than a Roman manuscript. I will trust an Israeli manuscript a little bit more than a British manuscript. A manuscript in the UK, for instance. And I'll give you an example. Do you know that the Ethiopian Bible has 84 books? These are some of the books in the Ethiopian Bible that you will not find in the King James Bible, for instance. Let me give you an example. The book of Jubilees. The book of Enoch. The book of Enoch is part of the Ethiopian Bible. The book of Enoch is the only Bible verse that has a storyline that is similar to the current Christian concept of Satan. Have you noticed that there is nowhere in the Bible where the We have the story of the devil fell from heaven. There was war in heaven. and It is going to happen. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. At the end of the world. After they blow the trumpet in Revelation chapter 9. Then there's going to be war in heaven. There is no biblical verse that supports that Satan fell from heaven. If you are using Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. You are mooing yourself. Because whoever fell from heaven in Isaiah 14. Died in Isaiah 14. And if you are using Ezekiel 28. Whoever fell in Ezekiel 28, died in Ezekiel 28. That's definitely not Satan. So you can't bend and arrange the narrative. The only book that has a similarity to a war in, a, 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 in, um, in heaven, the stories of the watchers, if you've ever read the book of Enoch, which I recommend you should, you, you'll see the stories of the watchers and all that. And that is the story that is closest in meaning and character to what we interpret today to be our devil. But it's not in the Bible. It's in the Ethiopian Bible. The book of Jubilees. The Jubilees were recorded every 49 years. The book of Tobit. The book of Judith. Baruch. So, so, 
just looking at the book, the foundation has issues. Not because you are looking at KJV, but because we are going as far back as the Textus Receptus. As far back, by the time you start, by the time you become a, a Bible scholar, and you start studying the Septuagint, you start studying the Vestus Latina, and then you progress to study the Biblia Sacra Vulgata. Then you start having understanding of the Textus Receptus. And then you would now see the political, social, economical, and otherwise issues that led to the translations of the first English Bibles, which are the Tyndale Bible, the Wycliffe Bible, the Geneva Bible, the Bishop's Bible. And then consequently, you will begin to understand how the King James Bible emerged. So the problem is the Bible has issues, foundational issues. Why else would the Ethiopian Bible have 84 books? The Catholic Bible has 73 books and King James has 66 books. That already shows that there are issues. So when I tell you the Bible has issues, you need to, you don't need to agree with me. Just go read by yourself. You'll see the issues. So, so, so here's what I have to tell you here. Who do we now trust to be the barrier between what the Bible really said, the translator, and what we now know to be the truth? Is it the same, our pastors? That today they are APC, tomorrow they are PDP, next tomorrow they are Labour Party? Is it them? Today they are whining and dining with APC leaders, tomorrow they are talking about Saul and David. Is it them? Who do we trust to interpret this word to us? The issue is not even the book. The issue is those who interpret the book. Because they would stand and tell you, God told me. They would tell you the Bible is the infallible word of God. And then there's disparities. Okay, if Pastor Fola says the Bible is the infallible word of God, my question is which Bible? Is it the King James Bible? Is it the Ethiopian Bible? Is it the Textus Receptus? Which of the Bibles is it the Septuagint? So which of them is the infallible? You know what infallible is? It can never fall, word of God. So we need to come together again. And dedicate ourselves to proper tutorship and learning. Question asking and stop believing clowns who mount on their heads crowns of glory. Giving themselves all sorts of titles but having no understanding. They have turned the gospel into a business. And guess what? You are your pastor's raw material. Your pastor does not need oil. He does not need cement. He does not need gold. All he needs is you. He opens a refinery on your head. You are his crude oil. And until you get up and change that narrative, you will continue being your pastor's tool. God bless you. And we see later on in the evening to just take care.